morning, P7. Okay, so this week your task is to start to write your story that is set with going back into the past. So last Thursday you had a plan to do and you had to think out this time slip about what time will your characters go back to, where will they be when they go back in time, etc, etc. If you haven't as yet completed that activity, you will need to do that first today. Because without any plan, you know that all stories can be very complicated and confusing and you really do need to have a structure thought out before you start to write. Otherwise, the flow of your story will not be as good. So, we have marked any of the plans that we got through last week and we've returned them to you with some comments on board. So if you have that returned to you today, I want you to read back over your plan before you start and take on any advice that we have given to you. Maybe you need to add a few more details to your plan. Maybe you need to think out a few more characteristics or details about what's going on around them in the story. Now, I have chosen an example of one of the time slip planners that was sent to me this week. And it's taken from actually Ashley Flanagan, so well done Ashley, yours has been chosen as an example to show the rest of the class. Now I really liked Ashley's story because she had thought out in great detail what way her story was going to go. Let's look at some of it together here. So it says, what time will your characters go back to? And it gives you some examples there. And she said, my characters will go back to the Victorian times to when their great-great-grandmother and grandfather were still alive and living in their Victorian mansion. So she's lots of description about when they're going back, the time period, and where in particular that place will be. And then says, where will they be when they go back in time? So that's just before they go back in time. Where are the characters going to be? So the same way in that Tom's Midnight Garden, he was in the house, he opened the back door, then when he came back in, he realised that things had started to change. So you have to think about where the character was just before they go back in time. And this is what Ashley writes. She says they will go back in time when they find their great-great-grandmother and grandfather's old pictures that have been put into a photo album. And they flick through all the pages until they find a picture of their late relatives when they had moved into their Victorian mansion, which they had inherited from Mary's mother and father. When they look through more photos, like when their great-great-great-grandfather was born, and then suddenly a thunderstorm appears and they get sucked into the past tense. So if I went on through her planner, you would see there's lots and lots of details about the characters and the descriptions, but I'm not going to worry about that. Now, what Ashley's going to do, and what you're going to do, referring back to your original plan, is to take this now and to convert this into the opening paragraphs of your story. Now, we don't just start in the middle of a story. Obviously, a story has a beginning, a middle and an end. So, you must be able to set out in those opening paragraphs something that's going to captivate your reader's interest. So, you need to get actually the opening paragraphs of the story to be the best ones. Because they're the ones that are going to decide whether a reader reads on or not into your story. So, what I've done is I've looked at Ashley's plan. And I'm going to show you how I've quickly thought up a story. Um, based on the information that she's given me from the plan. So I'm not making up an entirely different story right now. I'm referring back to what she has. Now apologies Ashley if I have written this incorrectly at some points. That's why you're going to write your own version of your story based on the plan. But from my understanding this is an example of what we've done. I'm just going to change the screen for you. She has said that the characters, main characters, are in this Victorian mansion that they've inherited. They're looking through some old photographs. Suddenly there is a flash of thunder and they're going to be taken back into the past, into the photograph here. So here's what I've done as an interpretation and you can see how it's attracted the reader's attention through. It all started on a rainy day back in September. It had been about two months now since the children and their parents had moved into the old mansion. You see, Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton had recently inherited the mansion from Mary's mother and father after they had unfortunately passed away. It was a lovely house, 
But just like any house, on a rainy day, a home can feel like a prison. Being a mansion, however, there was loads to explore. Each room had something unique about it. The ceilings were beautifully decorated with hand paintings. The furniture was made of solid wood, which was probably in the original positions it had once been. The paint on the walls was now worn a little, and the rugs on the floor were of oriental design. I'm bored, said Ella. I wish there was something to do. Tom had been poking about the games room they were in when he removed a dusty blanket from the top of an old chest and creaked open the lid. He choked on the dust as it spread into the air like a cloud of smoke. Wow, he gasped. Look at all these photographs. So these are my opening paragraphs based on my plan. And I have covered a lot of the points that Ashley has covered in her plan so far. So I've talked about here the fact that they're in the old mansion. I've set that scene there properly. I've talked about it having been inherited from somebody, a relative who has been who has died. Now I may have got that wrong from what Ashley had written, but of course, don't be worrying. You'll understand what you have to do in your own story. Now, then I've added some extra details. So it's going to be a thunderstorm that um, sends them back to the past. So of course, it's not going to be a sunny day unless the weather suddenly changes in my story. So that's why I'm actually starting the story off with it all started on a rainy day back in September. Okay? Rain is mostly associated with your autumn and winter seasons. So that's why we have chosen September here. Now the end I describe about being a mansion it has got, it's got in that mansion. So I'm going to describe what I see around me. So I've got hand painted ceilings, really heavy furniture, Paint on the walls now worn a little, rugs on the floor were oriental design. So that's why in your plan you had described the changes that the children will see around them. I want you to give me a good description of what you see. The same way that in Tom's Midnight like Garden, he describes the hallway really, really well. He describes all the different parts and features that he sees around him. I want to see here your description that gives good detail and sets that scene. And the reason for that is because a reader will want to build up a good image in their head. And then it says here, we've got some speech. And you can see, I've got my speech marks in. Where do my speech marks go? They go around the written speech. I'm bored, said Ella. I wish there was something to do. So here we have the next part of the story coming. And this is where Tom is poking about. He gets a dusty blanket. You can imagine him pulling it off. You can imagine the dust flying into the air. What's he going to do if a big cloud of dust comes up his nose? Of course he's going to choke. So he choked on the dust as it spread into the air like a cloud of smoke. I've got similes in here to make my description even better. Wow, he gasped. Look at all these photographs. And this is where then the story is going to build up that element of suspense. It's going to build up that interest from the reader to keep going. And this is where we're going to come to the part where they start exploring the photographs and suddenly there's this big roll of thunder. Everything's going to go back into the past and then suddenly they're going to change the scene again. They're going to now be in the Victorian period. So make your opening paragraphs really good. What I want you to do is to type it onto your Google document that has been attached to your um, activity today. I want you to uh, type up your story onto that please. Make sure it's on a Google document because when you return it to us as teachers, we can then edit and give you an advice on that, on that document. If you attach it as a PDF or something like that, we're going to only be able to give you comments along the side which are not going to be as useful or as easy for you to understand. So please, please, please use the Google document that we have attached to your account. And please return it to us because we need to get that marked before you can go on to tomorrow's lesson and the next one and the next one. Okay, so this week over the next few days, you're going to be writing your own story based on a period in the past. And it's about somebody, a main character going back in time. So remember, look at your plan first, stick to your plan. If you want to add anything before you start to write, that's okay entirely up to you and if you haven't got that activity done from last Thursday you need to use that as a starting point today. Good luck!